evening and welcome to the August 28, 2017 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jay, can you call the roll, please? Yes, in the absence of Aaron Patterson this evening, I will use my message to roll call. I think I can handle that. I hope. <laughs> All right. Mr. DuPerry? Here. Ms. Henderson? Here. Ms. Saunders? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. <laughs> Mr. Bealy? Here. Ms. Auglis? Here. And I note the absence of Mr. McGee. Oh, thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is approval of minutes from the July 17th, 2017 meeting. Do you all get copies of the July no. minutes? I don't, I don't believe yeah. you actually received those. Okay. I saw an email uh, earlier today. I would like to move for their acceptance, but yeah. we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll take those up at the next them? meeting. Okay, well, yeah. we I, remember I remember them, the and they were fine. <laughs> 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 all right. Thank you. Uh, and speaking of things being tabled, um, Item number four on the agenda, 108 Muzzy LLC, was tabled at the, at the request of the applicant due to the status of that ongoing review. So Are we will tonight? see that. Correct. So we will see that at a future date. So our hmm. relatively short agenda got a little bit shorter. Uh, and the next item, uh, JXH LLC requests a site plan amendment review for Ameriprise Financial Planning. 5 Ward Street, Assessor's Map, U30, Lot 40. Would you like to introduce this one, Jay? Sure, I can give a, a brief introduction. Um, so the application is before you for a site plan amendment for a site that was actually approved back in 2007 uh, on Ward Street. That approval enabled the conversion of a residential dwelling into a, an office building, really a, sort of more of a financial uh, office type use. Um, so the applicant is before you with a proposal for, to do a, a modest expansion to that existing building and associated parking lot and infrastructure improvements. Um, you will have received a round of staff comments as well as comments from Woodern and Curran uh, who did a civil engineering review. Um, I will note that the, the uh, parcel is in the TBC2 district. Um, is also sort of the applicable standards are, as I just noticed, the TVC2 standards as well as the site plan review ordinance. Um, I will note that as of uh, during the deliberation or the review process, I should say, it was noted that there's some additional due diligence um, regarding existing utilities and easements on the property um, that's required, and we've had some ongoing conversations with the uh, applicants um, representative about that and they're aware of that and are, are prepared to do that work um, and those are items that really are going to need to be done before we can really do a complete and thorough review but the applicant I believe still wants to prepare uh, appear before you to be sure there aren't any additional issues related to those site plan review um, elements that weren't otherwise raised in staff comments so that um, there are other items to address that they're prepared to do so moving forward. Um, so with that, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back to you. Okay. Thanks, Jay. I'm going to go grab an easel, I noticed. Okay. We left it out in the hall. And I'll hand it over to the applicant's representative. These both work? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Not that one. <laughs> uh, Steve Blaze. Um, here uh, representing Ameriprise. I'm here with John Hughes and uh, Peter Heil from our office. Um, as Jay stated, we're here for more of our sketch plan at this point. Um, we were planning to go in uh, full bore, try to get it done in one meeting, but um, we wrote a letter to the sewer, sewer department, uh, sewer district, uh, just to give them a heads up that we're making some changes. We're adding about um, 700 square feet of office, uh, really conference room and a little bit of office. Uh, gives uh, Ameriprise a little more elbow room. Um, so here we go. Um, so the addition, as you see, is in the darker orange. Um, so yeah, Ted Heydrich was here with um, it was Modern Woodman at the time, 
he had uh, converted this, as uh, Jay pointed out, uh, 2007 uh, change of use application from residential to uh, to offices. So what we're adding is um, the bit of office right here. Um, and the, the square towards the back is a deck, be an outdoor deck just for uh, meetings and employee use. Um, we are adding four parking spaces. Um, you'll see there's six shown here, but that's because to make it work, we have to eliminate two um, here to, to make a drive aisle. Um, the grade does drop off in the back a little bit, um, but it does work pretty well for us uh, to treat stormwater. Um, we'll end up receiving um, water from a good part of the roof and some of the parking lot and the addition and some of the lawn. So we're treating a lot more than we're increasing in impervious surface. We're talking about this lot is um, the entire lot's what, point, point 0.58 acres, um, obviously not a huge lot, and we're increasing impervious surfaces by 0 0.05 acres. So it's pr pretty small increase, but um, we did review this with Angela, and um, she, um, she likes our approach. What we need to do now, um, so to finish the story about reaching out to the sewer district, they came back and um, they had noticed there's, there's four other easements that could potentially be on our property. So um, our surveyor was on vacation this last week. We couldn't get the survey work done in time, so that's why we're, we're pushing it out to the next meeting. Um, he is back in the office today, <laughs> back from where was he again? Uh, I went to a conference down for NCEES, um, where they cause. Um, but he's, he'll be back in the office tomorrow, and um, we're hoping to get this, the easement stuff done uh, this week or next. Uh, to come back for for approval, but um, there aren't a lot of changes, but we are adding an o office back there. The tree line here, um, I noticed that was a uh, a comment that came up. I don't know that we're really taking away too many trees, maybe a little bit. Yeah, um, and it is, so we're, two sides of us are parking now. There's parking here and parking here um, to serve the uh, O'Reilly's Cure, Bessie Commons, um, that whole area. There is, there remains a resi residential use at the bottom of the page. Um, we are not touching that row of, I believe it's Arborvitaes. Um, they've, Ted had planted them back in 07, 08, and they've, they've kept growing since. So, um, I remember at the time there was, we had proposed a fence, and um, the neighbor and Ted talked. They preferred uh, a natural buffer a lot more than a fence. So. Um, with that, I don't know that we have too much else to add. Um, we've talked about comments. I mean, the, the treatment we're going to do is a pretty conventional underground soil filter. Um, I'm pretty sure you've seen those come before you um, a number of times. Um, pretty conventional design. Um, yeah, I don't know that we have much else. Um, we are going to, um, in, this, in this area here, we're going to transplant some some arborvitaes, put them here to provide a little bit of screening for the porch area. We'll end up putting some evergreens up here to just create a little bit of break in the space. And uh, that's about it. We There is some discovery yet to be done. There's a catch basin on the corner of our property that appears to lie within the easement for uh, drainage and sewer. Um, but we followed that pipe. We couldn't tell where it connected. And we're trying to figure out through uh, um, AMAC, AMAC or no Stantec? Sorry, <laughs> um, it was a DeLuca Hoffman design. Um, actually, Ange Angela's design, right? <laughs> Anyways, things have changed. The market crashed in 08. There's, you know, there were plans in that whole area, and um, we need to get to the bottom where this pipe connects. It appears to connect somewhere. It looks newer, um, but that is something that uh, we're needing to research between now and the finish line. So. With that, I'll uh, open it up to any questions. If I could, Thank you. If I could, just for a point of clarity, I, there was some discussion about the, the tree uh, or disturbance of trees. Staff mm -hmm. comments was really referring to the uh, sort of landscape row of arborvitaes and the potential for any disturbance there with the grading, oh, not, okay. not along the back. But, okay. Um, 
you sort of addressed that, stating that you didn't think those were going to be impacted. So that was okay. really the staff question. So oh, good. Thanks. Yeah. thanks. Sorry about that. Okay. Thank you. Um, we do have the opportunity for public comment on this item. If there's anyone else who'd like to get up and speak. Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to board discussion. Uh, before that, actually, Angela, is there anything that you would add in terms of the um, <coughs> due diligence or, or other yeah, um, items that you were did, looking at? I did meet with Steve and Peter on Monday, and um, since then I've had the opportunity to talk to um, Carrie Anderson, who developed and actually did probably a lot of the construction there. So I think I might have a little more information to help that catch basin um, after today. Um, so that's re that recent, just today. And um, I think a lot will have to do with the easements and really that catch basin and how that's kind of designed on the spillway is a little odd um, and trying to figure that out. So there might be some tweaking of that mm -hmm. that system, but... Okay. So. okay. Yeah, we feel pretty comfortable that there's vertical room to make it work. So mm -hmm. uh, okay. we'll work with Angela to they're all squared away. All right. Thank you. Susan, anything? <laughs> well, interestingly enough, um, Angela just took away one of my major questions, which was the uh, number six on site plan review staff comments, the incorporation of the existing catch basins, but it sounds like they're on top of that. I don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> I'll that one off my list. Okay. Um, but there are just little things, you know. I'm not gonna, I don't want to make a big deal about it, but the survey, the survey of the project seems to be incomplete. Am I assuming that these are all being taken care of now? Can I go through them? I think that's what he just read. Yeah. Um, to explain the survey part, or w would you like me to answer now or wait? No, I just want to make sure that, um, I mean, you're here. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want us to know about this? Or if you want to come back and answer those questions, that's fine. Yeah, I, I, I generally like to talk about stuff okay. up front if we can, okay. so we have a better chance at... Um, I don't have any real problems with this. Um, yeah. I would like to have some concept of what it's, the building is going to look like, but I don't, I can't require that, but I'm mm -hmm. just a visual person. It would be kind of nice to get a sense of what it's going to look like when it's completed. Other than that, I, I have no problems. Thank you. Thanks. Roger? Uh, <coughs> Um, I, actually, I don't have many questions either. I, I guess the um, the big issue is the drainage and the catch basins and who owns them and where they go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But uh, other than that, I, it's, it seems like a pretty simple addition. You know, it, I don't really have any problem with it. Okay. Thanks. Robin? Sure. Um, in addition to the, I think the easements, due diligence and the, the which includes the catch basin and, and drainage. Um, I'd definitely be interested in who's going to do the post construction maintenance um, after it gets done. I think that's really important to understand that the the the, um, the investment that you're making in the under drain soil filter will be there in perpetuity. Yeah. Um, other than that, I'm also interested in uh, whether or not Scarborough Sanitary District and Portland Water District have a statement of whether or not the capacity is there for whatever change is being made to the building. Yeah. Um, other than that, I have absolute faith and trust that you'll work with staff to to move through the items that have already been identified in staff comments. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Rachel? Yeah. Um, I, like Ms. Oglis, had a little difficulty with the... Um, visualizing the addition and how that was going to work because while you were very clear on what the addition itself would be, um, I had difficulty connecting it to the main, to the main building. Uh, I note that the main uh, entrance is on Ward Road uh, and there is an ADA entrance through the parking lot uh, but also all of the parking that you're proposing is much further away from the building and people being people, they're going to start using the ADA entrance a lot more. Just um, so it's the, it becomes a question of actually where is your main off your main uh, your main entrance and you might take a look at how that flow is going to work. 
Uh, and the second floor, is that at all ADA accessible? Uh, no, we're not going to have an elevator um, okay. to the second floor. But I believe the uh, second floor is uh, office, correct? Just uh, office space. So okay. it's not like... Uh, like the lunch room or anything like that. Yeah. So. Well, I, I did note that you were planning an ADA bathroom uh, in that expansion along with a little, little kitchen. Yeah. So. We, we feel that's, that's yeah. what ought to be done there. If yeah. So, um, you know, I, I just kind of would like to see how it's going to fit because I am having a little difficulty. Um, other than that, I, I don't have any questions. I think my colleagues have uh, covered any that I had to begin with. Thank you. Okay, so um, just to make sure I understand that um, there's more flow going into the ADA access, what you're... Yeah, I, I, yeah, I was wondering how you were, if you would, if it does kind of change the definition of main entrance, which right now goes off of Ward Street by, oh, putting, no, all of the, by putting all of the parking to the rear. Folks, as they get out of their car in, in that new parking area, they're going to go into the first entrance they see. Right. Um, so just to clarify, the way we've been, every time I've been to the office, it, it is, it's this door, and that's where reception is. Okay. So today, everyone uses that, the ADA entrance. Okay. And it's, it's, um, it, it's a fairly small use. I don't know that the, that we blow it up pretty big on the, on the plan here at a 10 scale, but it's not a whole lot of traffic. Um, I don't think. You can come on up and introduce yourself just for the record. Okay. Sir. Thanks. Uh, so John Hughes, and this is my building. So, and, and I'm your neighbor, just so we know. We're right across, five wards right across the street here, so just putting it in context. Um, uh, so I have a small financial planning practice, to answer your question there, and uh, I've got about eight staff people, and that's the majority of the parking that's coming in for it. So at, at any given time, we have back-to-back -back meetings. In a, on a very busy day, I might have six or seven clients visit in a given day there. Um, so what we do is right now we leave the opening to the entrance open for clients. So they always have a place. So they've got the handicap parking. They've always got additional spaces to be able to park into um, as they grow, uh, as they come in and out. So the flow of the traffic is just simply clients, individual clients coming in and out throughout the day there. The staff is going to be the furthest away. Um, the, you know, my team is going to be the furthest away as it stands there. Mm -hmm. The whole premise of the ADA and the likes of that is so we would have a first floor conference room. That's the beginning and the end of this whole process that we're at right now is so we could have a conference room that was all on the first floor and ADA accessible and as my clients age and just as we needed to expand. So does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions, Paul? Anything else? Well, not. Be good. Um, we'll see if Rick has any. I just had um, one question. I'm just out of curiosity, where is the potential easement issue? Is it the park lot or is the... Yeah, we're, we're, uh, they, they we're, we're engineers, issue. not surveyors, but we suspect that it's all here. Right, right there. There is a, there is a sewer line under there. Eight, how big? Eighteen inch? Eight inch, sorry. Um, there was a proposed 18 inch storm line, but I think the plans have changed. That's what Angela and I are going to chat about later on this week. So we, we think they're all pretty much here. Right. And there's one or two easements that actually appear to be totally off our property, but we're going to check, make sure it's all. So your parking, your, your proposed parking area and the, the new renovation isn't anywhere necessarily in or near the easement. It really should probably, be. Probably not. Right, but right. I mean the the sewer district, you know, they're doing their job. They want things to be documented. Right. Um, as, sure. as it turns I'll out, sure the. Yeah, as it turns out, the surveyor, just to give you a little background on how it all comes together, um, the original boundary survey was done by Dan D'Alfonso, um, who's retired. When we picked it up, our surveyor, Netto Land Surveys, did uh, existing conditions on top of the boundary. So now we have to go back a little bit to see, well, wait a minute, these easements are a lot older than the survey was. What's going on? So. We're bringing closure to it all, but there was a, a bit of a process, a little bit of research that, that had to be done. The topography, um, we were going off what was built uh, and calling it existing conditions. Things are a little bit different, but we're having the surveyor go out there for the boundary anyway, so we're going to have him get, uh, he's going to spot shot everything, and we'll have everything up, up to date. So. Okay. That's all I, that's all I have. Thanks. The rest of it looks fine. Thanks.
Yeah, I don't think I really have anything to add in terms of questions. I think it's all been pretty well covered between your recap and discussion we've already had. So um, just to recap, appreciate the, we appreciate the clarification on the, you know, the homework that needs to be done by the surveyor and trust that will get worked out as well as the sort of ongoing other due diligence yeah. that you'd be doing at this stage anyway. Uh, there's a comment about confirming water sewer capacity, which again is pretty routine. Um, we'll make sure that we've got good documentation of the post-construction stormwater management, including who's going to be doing that. Um, I appreciate the clarification on the Arborvitae, that, that road, that buffer yeah. road there, that that's, that's being left alone and just continue to grow, um, as well as the sort of clarification about what's behind the expansion and, and the, the flow and of the flow of traffic and so forth. So um, with that, I, I really don't have any additional questions. Um, are there, is there any other feedback you'd like from us at this stage in order to be able to flesh things out? I don't think so. I think okay. we're, we're nearly there. We right. just have a little bit of homework to do. Yeah, no, it sounds like you're engaged with yeah. all the right people and we'll yeah. look forward to seeing the next iteration. Yeah. All Great. Right. So we, we're trying to come back in three weeks. We'll uh, hopefully okay. the survey can be done. So. All right. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're already up to staff report. Um, let's see. So uh, report out on. I think all of you on the planning board saw some invitations to uh, comprehensive plan neighborhood meetings we had called Im Imagine the Future. Um, the planning staff and SEDCO uh, working in concert with the uh, Long Range Planning Committee sort of put on. We had held a series of four meetings in different neighborhoods throughout town from Pine Point and Higgins Beach out to North Scarborough. and. The last one was here at the town's uh, public library, actually. Um, all four meetings were set up in the same fashion, asking the same questions. We felt it was appropriate to, rather than sort of try to hold one big meeting here in chambers to really go out and give folks an opportunity, no, understanding it was August and in the summertime, it could be hard to capture people, so give uh, lots of opportunity for folks to show up. So we're very pleased to say we had over 50 people attend. Um, and so sort of uh, think that's uh, between the four, sort of looking at the aggregate of them. So, um, so we thought that, you know, if we had one, one meeting here, if we got 30, that would be good. So mm -hmm. I think we, we, you know, got some pretty good attendance. And, you know, the idea of those meetings was really to begin a community discussion around the future and vision for Scarborough and get people thinking big picture as we head into Plana Palooza, which is on August 25th through 28th, which is going to be September. our, did I say August? Yes, yes. thank you, September. <laughs> September you. 25th Woo. to 28th, good I catch. Thank you, sir. That's right, what's <laughs> happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> Why am I here? There. Um, so, and you know, those events are going to be occurring both here in Town Hall as well as across the street. Actually, they're going to be occurring, I'm sorry, at the high school cafeteria as well as across the street above Scarborough grounds is where um, um, we're going to be holding sort of the, uh, the work sessions, if you will. Um, and so staff will be sort of uh, pushing out a lot of advertisement and discussion around it in the next couple of weeks. We want to be sure we didn't start to get people to start advertising too soon. So we uh, um, so folks should start to see a lot of information around that. And we encourage board members to attend as much of those events as you're able. Um, and let your friends, family, and neighbors know all about them. So um, that's one item I had to report on. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll just add, I, I was able to attend one of those um, down at the Pine Point Fire Station and thought it was an interesting conversation that understandably kind of started with people talking about things that were specific to that micro area, uh, but then expanded to some broader issues that were more sort of town-wide and including traffic and things like that. So, and as you said, I think, you know, particularly given the time of year um, to have that level of aggregate participation is good. And it's always a challenge to try and get people engaged and try to figure out which are the right 
conduits to, to reach people and get them to come out. And there are some people who are only here during the summer. There are some people who are away during the summer. So there's never sort of a perfect way to, to do it. But I think um, the staff and the consultant have done a good job from what I've seen of kind of getting people engaged and soliciting that participation. So thanks. I have a quick question. Are there the list of questions and perhaps you know, minutes or agendas still available on the website? Excellent. Thank you for that question. It feels like a softball, and that I very much appreciate. So, uh, scarboroughengaged.org is a website that we have launched specific to the comprehensive plan, and it is an interactive website where folks can go on and see the minutes from those meetings, but more importantly, all the questions that were asked, and again, you know, these were sort of big visioning questions. People can go right on and answer right online and, and other residents can have an opportunity to see them. Um, so as it says, an interactive website. What's the name of that website again, Jerry? Scarboroughnage.org. Thank All you right. for asking, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, I didn't even have to set you guys up. It just happened. Love it. What a All good right. board. <laughs> uh, do we have an administrative amendment report? Two items to report on. Um, one, at the Willowdale Golf Course, board members may recall they were before you a little while ago, wanted to uh, actually went through a zoning change to allow for a manager's uh, apartment, if you will. Um, and so the applicant put together a plan that had a pretty modest addition to an existing shed out there. Um, it's really where they store the golf court carts. Um, and they were going to then expand that for additional golf cart and then the apartment above reviewed that with the chairman and found that to be uh, acceptable as an administrative approval. So that's been dealt with. Um, <coughs> and then the other item is the none such uh, brew pub. Their sign was also administratively approved and um, they are really going. Okay. That's where everyone is right now. That's where I'm not so sure right that I would like to not see those signs. But we can talk about that Fair in another enough. place another time. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Any that planning? It? Thank you, Jay. Yep. That's, that's all set for that. Any planning board correspondence? No? Okay. Any planning board comments? Yes. Um, first of all, I'd like to encourage people, again, who might be watching, to check out the website in terms of the comprehensive plan. Sometimes I think it feels as if the process we're going through is very complicated in order to get to what is it we really want to do with our new comprehensive plan. But the website seems to be a really good collection center for what's going on around and about us in terms of this. Um, this is a different approach to how to understand what people want, but the bottom line is the town really wants to know what people want and the best place to start is at the website. It's a really good, we, we haven't had a lot of success in Scarborough over the years with our website, but it's gotten to be, it has become much more sophisticated, <coughs> professional, and accessible. <coughs> so I encourage everybody to ch check that out. And then I have a personal thing. I have a plug-in hybrid, so I was very bold. And I went down there tonight and I plugged in my hybrid it all seems to be fine, but I can't get into the building. The building is locked. So I have to drive. I wonder why you're walking around. From yes, the I was walking. Outside. It's yeah. only Wednesday night is supposed to be. I don't understand all this. So let me just say, access to the building <laughs> is not all that clear. <laughs> That's it. Anyway, I appreciate the talent providing it, by the way. It's a wonderful service, and thank you for doing that. Great. Thank you. Roger. Uh, I would like to uh, echo um, Sue's comments regarding the uh, comp plan. Um, in my estimation, the town is really reaching out to the citizens, offering them a chance to participate. Um, it ir irritates me to no end when citizens, you know, come up with some problems and they've never been involved in something. And this is an opportunity for them to be involved, so uh, so they should not be in the future saying, I wasn't aware of that or something like that. So this is an opportunity. I, I, I'm not sure how many other communities reach out to the, to the citizens 
uh, as Scarborough is doing with this, and I really commend the staff for, for doing it in, in a long-range planning committee. And I really do wish the citizens would get engaged and, you know, find out what's really going on in town and, and, and offer their input. Thank you. Anyone else? Rachel? Yeah, um, Susan reminded me of something that I've thought about for a while, and that is in terms of our st design standards or review, we've got nothing in there that really addresses the issue of especially apartment buildings um, offering the plug-in centers for hybrids. Uh, and as we see some of the... Um, some of, let's say, call, it, call them the more upscale uh, apartments going into Scarborough, that would be probably a very attractive amenity, but uh, absent anything in the uh, in code or in the in the ordinances or in the design standards, there's not much we can do immediately. But I would suggest that we, or the town council, find a way to encourage that sort of inclusion. Thank you. Thanks. Robin, did you have something? Yeah, I was just wondering what, um, if you could talk a little bit about um, what opportunities there are for the public to engage in the Plan of Palooza. Um, I know, you know, you've talked about there are going to be meetings between September 25th to September 28th. So what does, what does that entail or what opportunities are there for public engagement at that point? Sure. Um, so, yeah, in addition to the meetings that we had in August, um, Plan of Palooza is going to kick off on the evening of the 25th. Um, that will be at the high school cafeteria, and that's really going to be an introduction to the four-day event. Um, and then we are going to start to get our hands dirty, you know, start to have a conversation. And this is going to be led. Um, part of the reason why the town selected the consultant group that we did was they are going to be bringing with them a team of experts. They're going to be bringing uh, folks who are experts in, in land use design, in transportation, in climate, in, uh, climate change and resiliency issues, um, economic type analysis. Um, so they're going to be bringing a host of folks uh, to these events to help shepherd our discussion. Um, so as I said, it kicks off the evening of the 25th, a big community kickoff. Then the next two days are what we have, are, there's going to be an open house, and that is across the street above Scarborough Grounds. Forgive me, I can't remember the address off the top of my head right now, but just across the street from Town Hall. And basically the, the, the workspace is going to be open from 9 in the morning, if not earlier, to 9 at night, if not later. Um, and folks are invited to come in any time during, uh, uh, during, <coughs> during that time see the lights on, come join us, essentially. Mm -hmm. And there'll be conversations occurring. You can uh, sort of have a private conversation with any one of those experts. You can walk around and have a discussion. The, the idea is that that's really going to be a very open communication, that if there's a, a sidebar conversation or a conversation happening about, let's just say, housing needs and a conversation over here about transportation issues, you know, as they overhear what's happening, you know, the two might come together and mm -hmm. um, tackle the issues. And then, and I, I'll note that on Wednesday, there are sort of specific, um, um, uh, uh, what's the word, elements that mm -hmm. will be discussed. Um, and one of them has to do with sustainability, another transportation, another design. Um, and so folks, who are interested in those different issues are going to be invited to come in in those two-hour blocks. But again, folks, if, they, if that's when they can show up and they aren't interested in transportation, that's okay. Is there a... <laughs> and then, yep. Go ahead. And uh, no, keep going. I was going to say, and then sort of how it will wrap up mm -hmm. is on the evening of Thursday, uh, the 28th. The consultants will really spend the day on Thursday, and they'll be spending all their time sort of putting together everything they heard mm -hmm. and for basically presenting back, providing a feedback to the community saying, here's what we heard. Here's what, when we talk about, uh, you know, uh, a certain element, here's what it might look like. So mm -hmm. again, that's where sort of having the land use designers in house. Um, they'll be able to give us visual representations of the vision that they're hearing from our community. Um, and so that's 
the four-day event. Mm -hmm. um, that's not the end of the conversation by any stretch of the imagination. Um, from there, staff will continue a community discussion throughout the winter, but our consultants will ultimately be going away for about three or four months, taking all the information they've gathered um, and, and drafting a plan. Once that draft plan is prepared, which will be presented back to us, I think we about uh, late winter, early spring, uh, we will start the community discussion all over again, um, and we'll be diving into the plan, be sure it, it represents what the community wants it to represent. Um, so, okay. uh, I may have missed it, but didn't you also say something's happening at the cafeteria? High school camp. The first day. Yes, the the first day and the closing event. Okay. Yes. So the, the, the 25th. It's going to be at the camp. Yes. High school camp as well as over there. Yep. So it starts starts at um, like I said Monday the 25th. Big community meeting. You know, sort of going to start at 6:30. Be there mm -hmm. as late as we need to be there. At the at um, the camp. At the cafeteria. At the high not at not over. Not across the street. Oh, okay. Across the street then occurs Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. Um, and then Thursday evening closes again back across the street okay. at the high school cafeteria. Jay, on the day when you have or when we'll have specific elements discussed, um, are well, I, I know you mentioned land use management and um, transportation. Yeah. Will there be will there be like a natural resource element group? Yeah, I think that's sort of in the okay. sustainability yep. realm. And then um, okay. yeah, like I said, uh, there's five or six specific. Sort of topic areas, topic areas right. um, um, and, which I don't and if I may, anything that isn't on the list is welcome to come up. Still fair game. <laughs> There's nothing about this that is set in stone. So if what is recommended mm -hmm. that we look at needs to be added to, you yeah, add to it. If something doesn't seem to be very interesting and people aren't responding, not a problem. Mm -hmm. There's no shoulds, have tos, or musts here. It's all about just getting the actual, the, the, the real gut level response to what do we want to see happening. And I think that the uh, consultants have ideas of, the, of how they think we might go at asking those questions, but nobody knows better than we do how to go about asking those questions. So I'm hoping that people will say, yeah, but. Mm -hmm. and throw something out there. I should also mention that um, in addition to the four neighborhood meetings, uh, we actually, staff got together, had sort of a, a, a meeting of conservation-minded folks between the Conservation Commission, uh, Scarborough Land Trust, the Friends of Scarborough Marsh, and the Land uh, Bond Advisory Board mm -hmm. uh, were invited to a meeting, um, the Imagine uh, Scarborough meeting. Nice. Um, SEGO has also been working on sort of an economic visioning <coughs> process. Um, various committees have been asked to s start thinking about their vision for Scarborough. So um, lots of pieces mm -hmm. are going to come together, um, hopefully. Great. And then I should also, another opportunity for a good plug for at least all uh, folks who serve on boards and committees. Um, and I believe an email probably just went out within the last day about the All Boards um, Summit, um, which is going to be on September 7th. If you haven't received an email, my guess is you'll see one tomorrow. If you don't, get in touch with myself or Karen Martin. Um, and this is really a process that's run through um, our friends at SEDCO and their visioning committee uh, for the last number of years have brought together the All Boards <coughs> and Committee Summit. Um, and so we're going to do sort of a focus on the uh, Imagine Scarborough discussion as well. Um, question on, on the on plan. Um, is it is this, is the focus primarily on how we want our town to look in terms of um, zoning and things like that, or is it also going to include um, how it's operated, how it's run? Uh, I, this is more, this is also for the public, so. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, it really does run the gamut, and I think one of the discussion points that we've had as we kick off this comprehensive planning process is that we're really standing on the foundation of the 2006 comprehensive plan. Um, a lot of good work and efforts went into the 2006 comprehensive plan that really talked about identifying growth areas in the community and, and low growth areas in the community where we might want to try to steer growth away from. Um, and the zoning has really, in the last 10 years, 
uh, we've done a lot of work to implement portions of that plan. Um, and so, you know, obviously, you know, as you implement zoning, it takes time for that to mature and articulate. Um, but I think, you know, this comp plan has been seen as refinement of that process, but also, more importantly, really looking at how do some of the, what I'll call emerging trends in the community sort of fit the pieces together? How does uh, the need for uh, more uh, housing uh, fit with transportation? How does that fit with the issues that we might be facing in terms of uh, sea level rise, adaptation, and resiliency? Um, energy consumption, I think, was something that was mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, not that plug-in cars, you know, that's the only part of the discussion, but it's sort of weaving all those pieces of the fabric together, um, I think, is really what this comprehensive plan is about. So, to your point, yeah, it's, it's looking sort of holistically. Yeah, uh, for instance, um, as a result of the 2006 plan, wasn't that the emergence of the TVC zones? Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Yes. So, yes, that's a very good example. Yeah. Yep. That's why it's important for the citizens to be aware of what's going on because it could be a grocery store right next to them before they know it. <laughs> well, and there are also issues around you know, the questions around municipal complex and some of those needs and, and schools and all of that flows into traffic and housing and all the other things that people care about. So, I hope I do hope people are making those connections. Mm. And you know, even though it may not be billed specifically as a you know a, a, a housing discussion or a traffic discussion per se, that they recognize that those those are all interrelated. Yeah, I, I should mention you know maybe as you said more for maybe the general public. But, you know, the comprehensive plan is really it's a guiding policy document for the community, and it will hopefully shape the decisions that future leaders make um, moving forward in terms of when they're grappling with a, a hard issue. I think Corey mentioned, you know, municipal services. When we're starting to grapple with what are the needs of the community, this will be a document that helps um, guide those discussions and, and uh, shape those policy decisions. Um, I'd just like to mention again that we are required to do this. We're not doing this because we think it's a good idea, period. We're doing it because the state says we will do it. And um, there are rules, there are guidelines and questions and, you know, all that wonderful stuff that, that we used in order to come up with what we've been talking about here. But bottom line, if we're going to have zoning, we have to have a long-range plan. And we would like to have our zoning reflect our long-range plan, which means that we need a long-range plan and um, there isn't anything I don't believe that happens in a town that's more important than coming up with a long-range plan that truly reflects what the community wants and anybody who says they didn't know what was happening mm, I'm sorry but you're not paying much attention because we really want to know so I just want to make sure that you know this is not something that we're choosing to do because it would make us feel good we're doing this because we have no choice, and let's make it work. Yeah, I think, I just to add again, though, I think the big difference this time, and I may be mistaken, is the outreach to the community. I don't recall that happening in previous. Everyone conference. is different. I know it, but I mean, when you look around the state, I I, I don't think that's happening, and uh, it's a great opportunity for the citizens to really have an input. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. I move to adjourn. I'll second that. <laughs> All in favor? Thank you.